Hello, welcome to the Mythology Manifest. For today's video, I'm going to talk about something that is aimed towards older classicists and is something they have debated about for a long time, the relationship between Achilles and Patroclus. Now, I don't express my own views in this video and this is purely based on different adaptations of the characters and scholars. I hope you enjoy. So, I'm going to discuss the different adaptations of the characters in both older and modern popular culture. I will begin by talking about the first time Achilles and Patroclus are mentioned in Homer's The Iliad. In this telling of the Trojan War, it is largely implied that the two of them are in fact just very good friends, and we are told that they sleep in separate parts of their shared hut, and that the reason Achilles is so distraught over the death of Patroclus is because they viewed one another as brothers and loved each other in a platonic, familial way, and nothing more. However, even in the Iliad, there are implications that their friendship is something more. This can be seen in Book 18, when Achilles is crying his black cloud of grief to his mother, Thetis, who tells him that now Patroclus is dead, Achilles is free to be with a woman. This could be taken in two ways. One is that the reason Achilles couldn't be with a woman was before was because he and Patroclus were together. Or it could be taken another way, and that would be that Achilles was never with a woman because he was always so focused on battle and he and Patroclus were always fighting together and because they grew up together were inseparable friends. In some tellings and translations of the Iliad, Achilles is mocked by the Greeks for his relationship with Patroclus and so goes to bed with a woman to prove a point. This happens in Book 9 and he makes Patroclus do the same. However, in other adaptations, Achilles is mocked, but does not deny nor confirm it. A good book which discusses both sides of this further, as well as many other aspects of the Trojan War, is The Siege of Troy by Ben Hubbard. So, the Iliad is quite an unreliable source for whether Achilles and Patroclus were friends or something more, as it has been translated so many times and changed to fit the beliefs of those times. This is why my classics class refers to them as special friends. It is as ambiguous as the Iliad as to whether the special refers to romance or just incredibly good platonic friendships. There are two other adaptations of Achilles and Patroclus' relationship that I am going to discuss. These are from the movie Troy and the book The Songs of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I shall first discuss The Song of Achilles this is a lot less ambiguous than the Iliad, and states that Achilles and Patroclus were more than friends. Madeline Miller writes this well and is a brilliant author. In this book, she uses all of the old myths and puts a more modern accepting twist on them. She keeps in the fact that Thetis, Achilles' mother, was disapproving of the relationship, and that the death of Patroclus pushed him into despair and pure rage, which is why he returned to war. She also kept in the fact that Achilles and Patroclus requested that their ashes be mixed in the same urn and they be buried together, which was not usual practice and would suggest they were something more than friends. In the movie Troy, however, the directors and producers made it very clear to the audience that they were not romantically involved. They did this by having the two characters be cousins. Achilles and Patroclus have very little shared screen time in this movie, and do not seem to have a strong bond, be it friendship or otherwise. Without the influence of a disapproving Thetis, it is impossible to infer anything from their performance, and clearly the Hollywood producers didn't want any kind of romantic element in any part of the film, as even the relationship between Paris and Helen did not flourish on screen. But they did have Achilles seem romantically involved with Bryces, which could perhaps be seen in the Iliad as Achilles is very protective of her and she seems more than willing to go back to him but this is not seen in Madeline Miller's The Song of Achilles. No one is able to agree on the relationship between Achilles and Patroclus especially not the scholars though you'll tend to find that it is the older traditional scholars who argue that they were nothing more than friends and that it is the younger generation of scholars who try to argue that there could possibly have been romantic relations between the two of them. The younger generation, however, are probably going on newfound research into Greek culture, such as the one discussed in The Siege of Troy. 
This explains that before the age of 30, Greek men were encouraged to be in a relationship with another man. This was not compulsory or mandatory, but from statistics, it is believed that the majority of men did do this. Of course, no one knows if this is fact or fiction because of ever-changing society, and there are no actual documents saying that this was true, and that's why the older scholars are able to disagree. Now, before anyone watching says, well, why do they argue about people that never existed? I would just like to say that Troy was a real place which was actually situated in modern-day Turkey, which was then called Asia Minor. There was a war which happened there, which led to it being burned to the ground, and a mask was found, which has become known as the Mask of Agamemnon. In reference to this video, a gravestone was found from the same period as the war, which had the names Achilles and Patroclus carved into it. So the characters in the Iliad are based on real people and Homer noted down the war, but added in the gods and other bits for story element. It is impossible to know what the relationship between Achilles and Patroclus was because they're dead and there is no official record stating what they were. But based on evidence, everyone is welcome to their own opinion. Please let me know what you think of Achilles and Patroclus in the comments or even on this channel's Twitter, which I have left a link to in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it an informative and balanced argument. If you did, please like, comment or subscribe. I'll see you next time on the Mythology Manifest.